What's going on? Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. It has been a long time since Nomadic Fanatic has been on two wheels. First of all, had Thanksgiving here at Julia's Banquet with some friends here in uh, Alton, Illinois. Awesome, really glad I came back up. Was really smart to come hang out with friends. So this is not gonna be a bike review, but I've got lots to share with you. And I also wanna talk to, with you about why I think that the Honda Grom is the best RV traveling motorcycle that you can possibly get. But this is my new motorcycle, guys. Now, Groms are nothing new. They've been around here in the US since I think 2014. It is not a pit bike, uh, it's not a mini bike, it's considered a full-size motorcycle just in a smaller form factor. So it's got everything that a normal motorcycle has just for smaller, shorter people. It's a 125cc, it's air-cooled, four-speed transmission, but unlike my other motorcycles, this one has fuel injection up here, so no longer carbureted. It's got disc brakes all around. Very nice. I got it brand new from the Honda dealership here in Alton, Ted's Motorsports, with eight miles. And I will show you how we're looking now. 52 miles now that I have put on this brand new motorcycle. It's kind of, I guess you'd call it camper van Kevin don't run over me yellow. It's not quite neon green like my cones. It's more like a, a neon yellow. I haven't even done anything to it yet except put on a RAM cell phone mount because I need it for GPS to know where I'm going around here. Uh, it is not a dual sport, okay? You can see by the tires, this is strictly a street bike, right? Uh, it does have foot pegs for a second passenger. But I, I don't know, max speed on this guy says 62. I have not gotten it up to that speed. I've not gotten on the freeway or anything yet. But it's bare bones stock at this point, guys, and it will not be that way for long. Some people consider these toys or something like that, but it's really economical for me. Plus, okay, you guys only know me from YouTube, right? So you don't really know that I'm only five foot six. Okay, I'm a short guy. So if you're six foot or over six foot, this might be uncomfortable for you. But on those bigger bikes, I can't even flat foot my feet on the ground. Let me show you what this looks like when I sit on it. See, it's normal for me. It doesn't look like a midget bike when I'm on this bike. For what I do on the road, uh, 60 mile an hour is gonna be just fine. I'm not gonna probably take this on the freeway very often. It's good to know that legally I could if I wanted to. The other thing I had to consider was how much of the dual sport uh, off-road did I really get out of the TW200? Not that much, not that much. I need this as a tool to get around the big city so that I can share more of it with my subscribers. Smaller engine, but also much lighter weight. All right, so I should probably answer a few questions for my followers about uh, the past because my, my brake issues with the RV, uh, I've done some drastic things in the past to fix that. One of them was physically get rid of the TW200 off the back of the RV thinking that somehow that was contributing too much weight. But then I also did a bunch of other stuff like went all OEM brake parts front to back on the RV, which ended up costing me over $3,000 or the initial cost of that TW200. Uh, so why am I going back to this? Some people might say, Eric, you're gonna have the same brake problems. No, it, it's not a weight issue. Or if it was a weight issue, here's, here's a way to think about it. And I mentioned this in the, in the past, but the hitch back here, I'm rated for 350 pounds max on that tongue. Well, this steel carrier weighs 99 pounds. The TW200 weighs 278 pounds wet. Do the math. That's 377 pounds that was directly on the hitched tongue weight. That's over 350. My bad. Now the Honda Grom comes in at 229 pounds wet. That means I'm only putting 328 pounds on the back of this, and I'm gonna swap out that battery for a lithium lighter battery later anyway. So now I can definitely say I am under the weight limit on the back hitch, plus all OEM brakes on the RV. Now, first of all, I just wanna point out that we as a country can really be divided when it comes to safety gear. I have gotten it from both points. I have been out there on a bike in shorts and a t-shirt, no helmet. 
And here in Illinois, you don't even have to wear a helmet. I've done it, okay? I am guilty of that. I have been mocked for that. I've had people say, you're crazy. On the other hand, as soon as I got gear for my TW200, half of my subscribers went the other way. They said, you look ridiculous, Eric. You look like an idiot, a fool. <laughs> what are you doing with all that stupid gear that you don't need? So I'm just gonna point that out. I may not always wear all the gear I need. Sometimes I may look over geared, too much safety or something like that. Also, I like to match. That's just my thing. And you might think that's comical, but if you can find stuff that matches, why not, right? So we'll start with my helmet. It's an SNS helmet. I love it that it has that half face look, but then it can instantly turn into a full face helmet when you need it. And then just pop it right back up. It's also easier to get on in this position. It actually matches the motorcycle. <laughs> That's awesome. Motorcycle gloves, same thing. I, I did get some black ones with yellow accents, just like the bike. Now this jacket, I just want to mention, the uh, Kawasaki in town here is going out of business, so it's 50% off everything. I happened to find a bright neon motorcycle jacket. It's not quite the same color as the motorcycle. Not quite, but again, I want people to see me on this bike. Not for attention, but because I don't want to die. Am I going to wear this year round, even in the summertime in the desert? Possibly not. Possibly not all the time, but I got it. It matches. I'm happy. Get the helmet on. It's a really relaxed fit helmet. Also, if I want to keep this open, I've got a button right here for shades. Okay, and then when I'm ready to ride and I really want full face, full face, and shades. So bear with me, this is my first attempt at moto vlogging. I do have a microphone inside the helmet, it might sound a little bad. And I don't know if the wind is going to sneak in under my chin or not, but I mentioned things like I technically feel that this is the best motorcycle for RVers. And the main reason for that is actually the fact that it's fuel injected over a lot of the carbureted lighter bikes. Because someone like me, I can change things like weather. It was snowing and icy and just miserable six days ago, and now it's 60 degrees on Thanksgiving. So weather can contribute a lot to the performance of the bike itself and how it wants to start and run and stay running. Other things to consider is the elevation. Now for me, traveling in one day, I can see thousands of feet difference in elevation, and that can really affect uh, the performance as well. Also, the vibration on the back of the RV can actually, since it's just gravity-fed gas to the carburetor, can, it can drip and flood the carburetor if that petcock is not working correctly. There's fourth gear. That's what we got. Now, I prefer the uh, chest mount camera system to the helmet one because you don't get, you don't see all the times where you, you're looking constantly to your left and right to see if cars are there. It's just a little less sickening to watch, in my personal opinion. I don't know what you guys think. Oh, somebody just got pulled over in their Grom. Isn't that a Grom? I don't know. No, that's not a Grom. Sorry, man. <laughs> Maybe that's the other good thing about a Grom, is you really can't get into trouble. I mean, it's... This does not have speed and power, guys. It is not going to get you a ticket. <laughs> it's going to struggle to hit 60 mile an hour when you need 60 miles per hour. So <laughs> uh, if you don't want to get a whole bunch of speeding tickets on your motorcycle, I'd say definitely go with a Grom. And it's fun. It's so maneuverable. I mean, it just, it's so lightweight. But it's not like unsafely light. Like, I don't feel like a strong gust of wind is going to tip me over or take me out of my lane, either. Alright, Mississippi River is going to be off to our left, but I'm going to look for that park I went to last time. Alright, 0 to 50 right here. Oh, speed limit's 30, never mind, can't do that yet. <laughs> Is 
It's a fun bike though. I can't wipe the stupid smile off my face. And even the real motorcycles wave to me. Like, watch this guy. See that? I got the old Harley wave there on, on the Grom. That's awesome. <laughs> Also, the uh, Grom community themselves is actually a really big community. They have these big Grom events. There's a YouTuber, Grommy Bear, and I forgot some of the other ones, but you know, they're fun to watch. And they, they show how to do all the upgrades to their Grom. And this thing is supposedly really easy to get up on one wheel. Um, eventually, I will figure that out. <laughs> I want to pop a wheelie on this bike for sure, but let me get comfortable with it first because it's quite a difference from other bikes I've ridden. It's fun, man. It's like, it's like stupid fun. I, I can't even explain it. Uh, what a fun little bike. Like I said, if it doesn't work out, I can always uh, go to something different later in life. I mean, you only live once, right? I mean, I've, 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 said, it, I've said it so many times before. Why wait to do something you wanted to do until you're not healthy enough or excited enough to even try it later on in life. If you want to do something in life, find a way to make it happen right now and, and enjoy it while you can. I mean, uh, I'm all about being happy and trying to stay as happy as possible on the road. Oh, but like I said, this is also a tool. So the bike, uh, the bike is really going to help us all uh, enjoy the road and the, and the places we go a little better and have some fun along the way. So. Let me know what you guys think as far as the camera chest mount. How did the audio sound inside the helmet? I can make a few changes uh, with band pass. I can make it higher or lower and stuff like that. But let me know what you guys think. I'm gonna ride back to the RV because like I said, I still wanna show you how to, in my opinion, properly load the bike and secure the bike to a moving RV around the country. So we'll go for one more ride. So we're back loading this motorcycle onto the back of the RV or any RV like this or bike bath. It's a cakewalk, guys. There's nothing to it. I'm not even kidding you. 229 pounds. You can almost just lift it and set it on the ramp instead. But this coming from some past mistakes that I made, yes, you can buy cheaper ramps than this Titan Ramps 600 pounder. You can buy aluminum ramps as well. Uh, and what you're gonna see is that they are built really flimsy and they are unsafe in a lot of ways. You're also going to definitely want an anti-wobbler, which this kit actually comes with one. That's what this square thing is. That keeps the entire ramp from wiggling back and forth this direction. I can't even show you because it's so solid. It's not moving anywhere, but don't buy a cheap ramp, guys, because almost all the cheap ramps come with a tiny little two or three foot ramp right there. You're going to bottom out with nearly any motorcycle and it's pointless, right? This is a 67 inch ramp that stores on the back of this. Let me just demonstrate it to you how easy this is to put up there. I have the cone put right there so that once I get it up there, I don't have to have somebody else hold it. I just put the cone between the spare tire and the gas tank of the bike and that keeps it from the mirror hitting up here on the RV. So let me show you. I like to get kind of a running start at it at least. just to build up some momentum. That's it. Put the cone back here and secure it. Now I can already walk away from it. It's not gonna tip over. Okay, the second mistake I made hauling a scooter and then a motorcycle is the type of ratcheting straps that you have. As you can see by this one, it has this extra little thing there. I believe we call this an S-hook strap. The reason why this thing is important in a motorcycle strap that you're driving on is because the tension from the shocks, the front forks or the rear shock, depending on the terrain, can make this loosen on one side, right? And if this is not closed, then this can come off something, right? So you definitely want to get a closed loop or I think it's called a closed S ratcheting strap. I highly recommend the second time I went with Rhino ratcheting straps made in the USA, lifetime warranty. And each one of these kits that comes with two ratcheting straps also has these soft tails, soft, soft, I forgot what you call them, but they're for handlebars. Now I'm not saying that handlebars are always going to be your best option for securing every single motorcycle, but for the Grom, I really don't have any other options because if I go right here, I fear that I'm gonna 
get this wiring involved, plus I'm definitely going to shape on the plastic coming down right here. So, for me, the handlebars coming down at an angle and pulling it forward is really going to be my, my best option for securing this particular bike. And for the process of this, what I'm going to do first is the back one. So I'm going to remove the cone, I'm going to put the strap here. This strap, I don't even have to adjust, this one's always going to be in this position locked in. And then it'll be a little loose while I pull the bike this way and then ratchet this one down. That's what we'll do first. So this one is good right there, I don't even have to adjust it. Let's talk about one thing. Yeah, we're putting a little bit of strain on the front forks, but there's no other way to do this, really. People say, oh, you're gonna blow out your fork seals. Well, you know what? I have to find a way to haul it and there's nowhere else to grip this. So I'm, I'm going to use the bike suspension to kind of help travel with the motorcycle. If I have to replace fork seals once every year, that's no biggie, it's a $5 seal. It's not gonna be that big a deal. Um, I have to be able to have the flexibility on the back to be able to carry it in the first place, otherwise there'd be no point in having the motorcycle. So, some motorcycles you can put a block between the fender right here and up here somewhere, like a piece of wood or something, and then when you're crimping it down, you're not going to compress the forks as far. This is a plastic fender. <laughs> uh, the Grom and the TW, there was just no way to physically do that in this circumstance, so this is going to be okay. Let me demonstrate what I was talking about earlier, though. Say you're going over a really heavy bump. Look how loose this can get. I'm pulling it essentially, right? This could come off if it was not a closed S down here. That's why you do that. Now on the back. Unfortunately with this bike, there are not very many options. I technically would be okay with putting in a strap here and bring it to each corner, but there's an even easier way to just use one strap, go up through here behind this, underneath the rear shock and back out the same way. Behind the muffler, the muffler is mounted to the same bracket right here, so that's not gonna cause any problems, and then secure it right here. You don't need to get it too tight. Yep, this bike ain't going nowhere. And I've always got eyes on my bike while I'm driving to see what it's doing. I can physically see if I have a, a strap malfunction or something happen on the bike. Oh, and lastly is just how this ramp here stores. Just like that. Held on by a couple of wing nuts like that. Easy peasy motorcycle transportation, oh yeah. Like I said, I had a blast with Thanksgiving with friends here. Uh, we went to that banquet and the food was scrumptious. I'm talking chicken, ham, turkey. Best of all, no cooking, no cleanup. While I kind of feel guilty for the people that have to work on Thanksgiving, it's early enough that they still get a Thanksgiving at night with their family and friends. And I think it was a, a really good choice to come back and see friends. But now, I need to make some more videos for you guys. So, oh, and also I brought back some turkey for Jax. That's right, Jax. I did not forget about you, buddy. I brought you home some turkey. You want some turkey, buddy? You, you do want some? Happy Thanksgiving, little guy. Enjoy. All right. I don't know if I was allowed to, but I did anyway. So, we'll get a chance to uh, utilize this bike on the road a lot for the rest of the uh, Great River Road. So, thanks for following Jackson and I on the road. We will see you soon. Back south. Okay. Bye, guys.